Hey, Wid fam, this is Leo with One Happy Widow. Welcome to day one of Vlogmas 2022. So, so um, um, if you're new here, my channel is to help widows and widowers to pivot from grief to growth in their um, journey. So day one of Vlogmas is not actually day one of Vlogmas because um, I am pre-recording this and because today is a special day. So I want to ask you this. I'm going to be doing 12 days of Christmas for Vlogmas. I'm not doing every single day in December because just too much work. Comment down below if you want the Vlogmas videos to just be short and sweet, live snippets, just a few minutes of like, hey, here's what we're doing today. This is what we're Christmas Eve thingy and bye. Or if you want me to try to put, you know, some content in there, like some sort of lesson, some sort of today we're going to talk about such and such and so and so. Some of the days, like today, is going to be filled with donkeys. And so I'm probably not going to be doing a lot of lessons because I am 8.3 miles from the donkey farm. I'm going to be there in 12 minutes. I'm already running a few minutes late because I'm so breakfast. But um, you know, I'm not going to be wanting to stop and give you life lessons about grieving when I'm trying to look at my donkey things. And so, um, today is just going to be full of cuteness and adorableness, okay? Also, we got to come up with names for these little babies. And so, we got two girls. Um, I've seen a video of one just a few minutes after she was born. She's white with spots. I haven't seen the, um, the other one. I think she's also white with spots. So we're going to have to take a look and I hope um, that we'll be able to tell them apart. <laughs> They're not sisters, but I think they were just born a few weeks apart from each other. And so anyway, we're going to see the donkeys. Also, this is a surprise for JP. So if you see him, don't tell him. Uh... This is going to be like an early birthday present for an early birthday present for him. He knew that we were picking them out, but when times got tough and we had to tighten up our belt, we figured we were just going to have to scrap the plan for the donkeys. And so we sort of put it on the back burner. Then I got the call and she was like, and I was like, oh gosh, we can't get donkeys. And then I saw them and I started thinking about them and I was like, okay, I'm doing this. So we've been scrambling and scraping to try to um, finish paying off our donkeys because they ain't cheap, let me just say. But uh, anyway, let me let, like, let this be the lesson for today for vloggers, okay? Or for um, just for the widow, you know, grief lesson for the day. Um, if you're lonely, one way that you can find company is to get a pet. Now, not everybody is a pet person. Depending on your lifestyle, um, dogs can be great companions, very loyal, they will love you no matter what, unconditionally, but the downside to dogs sometimes is that if you work a lot, you're not home very much, they can have anxiety, they can have separation anxiety, they can um, chew all of your stuff up when you're gone because they're really sad, they can have accidents, and if you get a puppy, while they are all cute, they will chew up everything in your house, and you have to learn how to potty train them, sometimes that can be really difficult. Especially if it's a boy. Just say it. If you're trying to get a really good pet for a dog, I've never had good experiences with boy dogs, even after they're fixed. I, I, you know what? Are you team boy dog or team girl dog? Um, comment below. We've had some boy dogs growing up. They always sucked as pets. And then I had one dog that we had for 16 years. That dog, I thought he was never going to die. Um, just He was just a horrible. He was a horrible dog. And... He was just a butthole and he never learned to potty train. He was very stubborn. He was trying to be dominant. He weighed about eight pounds. He was a little shih tzu and I just could not stand him. The, you know, the girls liked him okay. But anyway, it was the boyness about him. Um, all the good, all the girl dogs that we've ever had have been awesome, smart and trained easily, sweet, not aggressive. You know, they don't want to hump everything in, in sight. So, um, that's just my preference, but just, you know, if you're not sure and you're thinking about getting a dog, get a girl, get a girl dog. So, um, anyway, so dogs, loyal, great pets, but limit your ability to maybe travel. If you want to do some traveling, it's really hard to do that with a pet, especially with a dog. So you have to pay to kennel them or to have somebody else sit for you or pet sit for you. And again, 
again, if you work a lot, um, you know, dogs, they don't like being lonely by themselves in the house all the time. So cats, cats are a lot less, um, you know, lower maintenance. Um, also, you pretty much don't even have to potty train them. You just put out a litter box, make sure they know where it is, and they instinctively go to the litter box. Although, I mean, so that's easy. You don't ever really have to take them outside because they can live their whole lives inside and never leave, use the litter box, and eat their food. And you know, a lot of times you don't even really know that they're there. However, um, a litter box is always a tricky thing. We've had cats a few times before. I mean, they're okay. If, if they're nice cats, not all cats are nice cats. A lot of cats are buttholes too, because that's just a lot of their nature. Is they're like, you know, they'll only sit with you if they want to grace you with their presence. But anyway, I've noticed that a lot of times, even if we try our best to keep the litter box emptied and clean pretty often, gosh, if you just go one day or so without cleaning that thing, um, your whole house can smell like cat pee. Or just musty catness or whatever and and when you live in it you, you get nose blind to it and you'll notice it and so you'll have guests over that they walk in and they don't want to tell you that your house smells like piss but it does and you don't notice it because you live there so just know if you're going to get a cat you got to get a really good litter box with really good you got to get a really good litter box with really good litter i don't know what the best kind is but like do a lot of googling and searching on amazon for reviews for the kind that eliminates the smell maybe the kind that scoops it out on its own or kind of self cleans to help you out a little bit on a daily basis but anyway keep that litter box clean and you know good luck to you you can also neuter that thing because if you get a boy cat again he's gonna pee all over everything and boy cat pee that's marking his territory um you could never get the smell out so we had a cat to pee in our JP's truck one time. I swear to you, like eight months later, sometime when it got hot in there, I would get I would get in the truck and be like, man, it still smells like cat pee in here. So just know, it sounds like I'm giving you all the cons, but I'm just like giving you the warnings. On the other hand, you know, if you do have a pet, it can keep you company. And pets seem to have a sixth sense about like when we're really sad and we need some extra love. And they will, um, they tend to gravitate towards their people. And, um, you know, I think it's scientifically proven. I don't have a study, but I think I've heard or read somewhere that um, just having a pet next to you to pet, that's why they call it pet, right? Me. Um, but just petting your pet can literally lower your blood pressure by a certain amount and like cause anxiety to lower. I mean, this is why they have service dogs, you know? emotional service dogs and just all these other service pets and things like that because they can actually help you calm down they can ease anxiety lower blood pressure you know just make you feel not so lonely i know it's not the same thing as a person i know it's not the same thing as having your spouse there but if you are um, especially if you're living by yourself and you don't have a lot of people in your life and you are really feeling lonely I think that um, a pet is an is an option. Directly at the camera, I am still trying to drive. I'm two miles from the farm. Um, this um, and these little guys right here that we're getting are. I don't know if I would recommend them to everyone because number one, they're freaking expensive as hell. So um, I, you know, I don't even want to talk about how much these darn things cost. But and we were on this waiting list for a year and a half. However, they're miniature donkeys, and so they're really, like, I know a lot of people get donkeys to, like, herd, um, you know, their livestock, and to guard their livestock, not herd their livestock, guard their livestock, and things like that, but, and maybe as pack animals, or to, like, um, carry stuff, you know, but that's just for a work farm. We're just, you know, we're basically just getting them as good. They're so little, you'll see when I get there, even the full grown ones get up to like 20 to 30 inches in height. And so they don't even come up hardly to your waist. And their heads do, but their bodies come to like, I think your thighs. And so um, they're just cute. So they don't eat as much. They mostly eat grass and hay and a little few pellets here and there. So they don't really require a whole lot of care. So luckily we have um, farmland, you know, we have a barn, we have a fence around our yard and everything. We will have to separate the dogs from the donkey because dogs and donkeys historically don't get along. So we all will have to keep them separate. All right, I'm going to stop and turn the camera around and then come back to something.
Okay. I am at the farm. So there's some, um, this is just some cows, I believe. And I'm going up. I don't know if there's much to see here. Here we go. Um, I'm coming up to the gate, which I think has a gate key. I mean, a gate, you know, like a code. And I used to know what it was, and I don't know what it is anymore, so I guess I'm gonna have to call. I do have an appointment, but I'm about 15 minutes late. So, I'm gonna call up there and let them let me in, and then I'm gonna go see my donkey babies. Let's go do it. So, the day in the life of a widow and a widower. I just got to the farm. I'm about to turn this around and show you the donkeys. I'm waiting on the farm hand person to come and take me to where ours are. So I'm just kind of here by myself right now, but I just got a text from JP, my husband, and he's on his route and he had two flat tires at the same time. So he's on the interstate waiting for a tow truck to come and help him. And they, it said they would be two and a half hours before they even get to him. And so usually he's done with his route by about 1.30. He's not gonna be done with his route today until like four or five o'clock. And that man wakes up at 3.15 to get started on his job. So it's going to be a long day for him. And it's a Monday. And so he's just going to be sitting on the interstate by himself with nothing to do for two and a half hours. Awesome. Another day in life. Welcome to um, Vlogmas Day 1. <laughs> Alright, I'm turning this camera around because I see two donkeys that are giving me the side eye. Because they're wondering who in the heck is this woman. And then I have another donkey over here that's wanting to come see me it looks like. So... Until she gets here, her name is Laura. I'm just gonna be, you know, fiddling around. There's some two donkey babies. I don't remember their names, but I remember them being here last time. Yeah. I see some sweet babies. Yeah, hey. One, one thing we liked about this farm was that she um, socializes the donkeys really good. Hey babies. Yeah, hey babies. Okay. They don't know me, but it's okay. This one looks like she's she's guarding the other one from me until she can figure out if I'm safe or not. Hey babies. Yeah, okay. Now she's letting me scratch a little bit. Yeah. But anyway, she socializes them um, you know, with love and attention from the time that they're born. Yeah, now you like that, don't you? I think when their ears go back, that's a sign that they aren't happy about something, but I'm not real sure. But she doesn't just like treat them, like give them treats in order to bribe them to come over. Because then that's all they want when you come over is just to expect for you to give them treats and food. She actually like socializes them with love and attention. And so it makes them real people, you know, they like people. And so, and I don't know if this is one of our mamas or not. She's got so many. They're all spread out, but she's got, um, yeah. Look, this one's being all dominant. And says so the little one says, I want a scratchy scratch. I want a scratchy scratch. Yeah. Yeah. Are you jealous? This one's so cute. They're all both so cute. Oh, she says, oh, I want scratches too. They're so pretty. Isn't that a cool, um story about I don't know all the details I'm gonna have to ask my husband he's so much more well versed in the Bible than I am but there's something about um, the donkey and the story about the that the donkeys have a cross on their back so I think it's to symbolize that they helped um, they helped when Jesus went to the cross and helped carry his burden but I that I could be totally wrong on so if I am feel free to correct me but um, anyway yeah, look at them biting at each other. They're getting on each other's nerves. I think it's because they're jealous and they want scratches. Oh, look at the babies. Look at the babies. Hey, babies. Is that the mama of this one? Uh, okay. And But these two right here, is that a mama and a baby too? Okay. Look. And I can't remember which one. One of them was a real strict mama. Is that Prada or is that Izzy? Okay. She's the one that would bite them on their neck if they... Uh... <laughs> yeah. That's what we liked about her because she's real... Oh, you 
are so beautiful. Yeah, so you a proud mama? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's mama. She's protecting the baby. There's baby. Hey, baby. Okay, I won't reach it. I won't reach over. Oh, she's so precious. Yeah, we didn't want to name them until we saw them and saw their markings and all that good stuff. So, oh, hey, babies. Oh, you said, it's so funny that the brown one had the spotted baby and the spotted one had the brown baby. <laughs> hey, guys. Hello, ladies. Oh, yes. You're so nice. So, it's the darker one here or the lighter one? Okay. That's right up next to her. Hey, don't you bite. Don't you bite. Don't you bite. Hello, pretty girl. This is easy. I saw other mama. Yeah, and there's her baby right there. That's a baby. That's a pretty baby. Oh, yeah, she likes to bite and nibble, don't you? Yeah. Good girls. Good girls. You like the scratches? Yeah, you like the scratches? I saw her getting it outside. Yeah, racing around. Yeah, were well, you having fun outside? Was you having fun outside? Oh, you're so pretty. He's so pretty. Yes, you are. You got a big fluffy face, don't you? She's got her, her face is so fluffy. <laughs> yeah, are you buddies? Are you two buddies? Yeah. All right. Oh, somebody, okay. Somebody's jealous. Somebody's jealous or hungry. Are you going to kick? Are you going to kick, girl? No. I'm sweet. I'm sweet. Oh, she's so sweet. Yeah, she's got a little blonde belly. Look at her. She's so sweet. <laughs> and she likes to nibble. I see you. Okay, on the way home. Okay, on the way home. So, we saw our babies. I thought they were both white with spots, but they're not. One is white with spots. The other one is brown with like a blonde underneath her belly and inside of her ears. So now we have to go home and brainstorm and figure out what, um, what to name them. Two little girls, very sweet. I have to pet them both and they're really friendly. They're so, they're very used to being around people and all that. So it should be very, they're already socialized. So it's not like we have to work to socialize them. That's the reason why they're so dang expensive and so popular. And it's a good thing we decided to stay on with this because she said there is a waiting list of 20 people waiting for cancellations or new babies. And so I'm glad that we didn't give up our spot because we probably would have never gotten them because we could have been on a waiting list for like two years. And we just never would have, we never would have made it happen. So um, I'm on my way back and now I am burning up. So I'm going to cool down a little bit. So I'm on my way back home. I should be home just in time, almost one o'clock, to take my oldest daughter lunch. Say cheese. 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 Having hibachi today. We cook in front of your place. We never called it hibachi when the kids were little. We called it the cook in front of your place. Where do you want to eat? Cook in front of you. In front of you. Okay. Say scallops, veggies, fried rice. Yummy, yummy, yummy. She wants to go to eat hibachi. To eat hibachi. And the reason why I'm taking her to lunch is because she just graduated from college on Friday <laughs> with her psychology degree. So, um, and it's, it was online, so she didn't really want to travel down and like do the whole pomp and circumstance with the graduation and the hat and thing, the tassels and all that stuff. So she was just like, oh, by the way, I graduated. <laughs> like, okay, she's 25. She's been working on her degree for you know, six years, six or seven years, and just little by little picking away at it, you know, and she finally just, so um, I'm going to meet her at the house at one o'clock, and I will take her and her youngest sister, Dallas, to 
out to eat at the hibachi place, which I don't want to tell her this, but we just had hibachi like two nights ago, and then I had it for leftovers last night, and so I'm going to have it again today, and probably again for dinner tonight, but you know what? Hibachi is my favorite food, so I'm not going to like rain on her parade if that was her first choice of what she wanted to do. I wasn't even going to tell her that I just ate hibachi because then she'd feel bad and guilty and she'd do something she didn't really like just to not feel bad. So I just didn't tell her. I just said, okay, whatever you want. So um, I just got finished texting JP. The, um, the tow truck came and fixed his tires, two tires. I don't know. I don't know yet what happens. I don't know. I don't know yet what happened, but his tire is shredded, like shredded in rubbery strips on the road. $750 to get that fixed. Merry Christmas to us. Like that's more than what we're spending on each other for Christmas this year. So, which means we might not be spending anything <laughs> on each other for Christmas this year. We might have to put that on the back burner a little, literally, and that might have to be our Christmas. The 750 bucks, you know, three weeks, four weeks, three weeks before Christmas is, um, that's, um, that's a big thing. <laughs> so, um, I don't know, we're going to have to talk about how to insert that into the budget when we get home. Anyway, that's, I mean, that's part of Christmas, I guess, but it ain't the part you really want to talk about. So, anyway, I'm on my way um, home. I will be on the road for just over an hour, and I'm so happy that I got to see my donkey babies. One of them was born on September 12th, so that one is almost three months old, and the other one was born on October 13th, and so she is almost two months old, so they're only a month apart, and so we talked about the possibility of breeding them down the road. You know, it'll be a while, but since we have two females, then we can breed both of them. And, um, you know, even if we got, even if we took them somewhere for, you know, to get studded out, we could take them together and they could both get um, preggo by the same dad. They could be like sister wives. <laughs> they can have their babies by the same daddy. So, anyway, <laughs> um, but, you know, that's not, it's not like we're trying to, you know, baby farm out of them or anything like that. It's just, that's an option down the road. And so we're glad that we got two girls because I didn't really want to have a boy and a girl because then we would have to neuter the boy and worry about him being aggressive, all humpy all the time and all that stuff. So thankfully we didn't get to choose. We just got what we got and we got two girls. And so we're happy about that. So Vlogmas day number one, I did get a little lesson in there, you know, about being a pet as a companion. Like I said, um, comment below if you, like, for what kind of topics you want to see for Vlogmas. If you just want, like, frivolous, this is what we're doing, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, okay, have a good day. Or, hey, we're doing a little bit of this, and let me give you a little nugget of, you know, life lessons to the widows. I don't know. Um, if you want me to come up with, like, a, you know, a theme or a topic, then just tell me what you're looking for, you know, because I don't want to um, spend time making something that you're not really, you know, into. Like, I just, just I don't, wouldn't, didn't come here for that. I came here for whatever. So, what are you coming here for? <laughs> Put that in the comments below and give me some feedback so I know how to move forward. And then I'm going to go home and edit all this stuff together and make Vlogmas Day number one. And then I got to go back to work tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, next week, Monday through Friday, the week after that, Monday and Tuesday finally out for Christmas break. So, um, there you go. See you tomorrow. Bye.